Noisy, huh? This is a pantry door, and maybe I don't want my wife to hear me sneaking in here late at night. But besides that, it's very irritating. It would be nice to shut it up. Somehow, the parts of the hinges are rubbing against each other. Could be the screws are loose. Let's take a look. Undisturbed and covered in paint. No dark lines around the screw heads to show that they've been loosened. No crack line around the outside of the hinge. No sign of loose screws anywhere here. Now what about the other hinges? It's dirty up there. Somebody's tried to lube these hinges before. And it's too high for me to get a good look. So I have to get a ladder. And while I'm at it, I might as well get a screwdriver. Might as well make sure these hinges are all snug. One advantage of a combination screwdriver is that no matter what kind of screws were used in your hinges, you'll always have the right tip. Plus, I also have here a paper towel which is wet with some soap. That's for the smudges. Plus, I picked up this little three-foot ladder. Now, a small ladder is usually a pretty good idea when it comes to work on the top hinge on a standard 80-inch, 6-foot-8 door. But in this case, we've got an 8-foot door here. A ladder is an absolute must for me to be able to reach that top hinge. First we'll clean up a little. Now we're going to check the hinges. Hinges, screws. Just give them each a twist to make sure they haven't loosened up. Same in the middle. And at the bottom. Good all the way down. Still squeaking. So it comes down to the simple lubrication of metal parts that rub together. The two halves of the hinge and the pin. Of course we could waste some time trying to decide which of these hinges is the worst offender, but we'll just lubricate them all. And to do that we'll need some tools, plus of course the lubricant. A bucket's always handy for transporting tools. But most important is the lubricant. Something with silicone or Teflon in it, skate lube, lock lube, they'll all work just fine. But what more important is the little red nozzle coming out of the cap. Without that, the stuff will get all over and you may not even get it inside the hinge pin socket. Diagonal cutters, also known as dikes a standard carpenter's hammer, and a medium nail set. One that's a little bigger than a finished nail set. This one's 3 seconds. Some paper and some cardboard to protect the counter, and a bit of masking tape, the use for which we will explain later. For safety's sake and ease of operation, we'll close the door while we lube the hinges. Now we'll prepare for the mess we're going to make. The lube is going to ooze out of these hinges and dribble down the jam unless we find some way to collect it. Now we could make a standard paper dust pouch like the one in my handy dandy video, but for this goop we need something more absorbent, like a paper towel. All we need is a single towel. First fold the towel in half. You don't have to crease it. Then fold up the end about an inch. That one you can crease. Then tape the end with a tidbit of tape on the loose open part. Then open up the pouch. Then tape the top. Let's get to work. Ordinarily I'd start at the top, but to see what's happening better, I'll start in the middle hinge. We'll tape the pouch directly under the hinge pin, and then we'll get our tools. Yikes! hammer, and don't forget the nail set always needs a little space between the cap and the knuckle. 
Hold your dikes cup side up. Grab the cap underneath with the jaws, squeeze them together. The pin pops up a little bit. Then all we have to do is knock the underside of the dikes with the hammer and up pops the pin. Voila! But watch out for that pin. Pins and hinges can be very dirty things. We want to shoot a little lube on the pin, but we don't want to mess up the kitchen. That's what the paper and cardboard are for. With a paper towel, we'll wipe all the grit off. Now for the lube. Shoot a little on the shaft. Wipe that up a little. Then do it again. But before we shove the pin back in the hinge, we're going to lube the hinge a little bit. First a shot in and around the bottom. Then a shot down in the top. By now you may have noticed that the pouch only catches the dribbles out of the hinge. You still get some spatters on the casing mold in the face of the door that you'll have to wipe, maybe even scrub it up later on. Because the hinge is going to dribble even more when we put the pin back in, we leave the pouch in place. And for this job, all we need are the dikes and the hammer, and of course, the pin. We set the pin in the top of the hinge. We turn the dikes the opposite of the way they were before, cup side down. And then it goes. But what if you can't get the pin back in the hinge because the knuckles are separated? With a two hinge door, this could be a bit of a problem. If it's the top hinge, grab the door by the knob and pull up toward the top hinge. That may marry the knuckles, but you may need somebody else to put the pin in for you. Another method is to take a putty knife, stick it between the door and the jam, and then lever it toward the problem hinge. See if that doesn't get the knuckles to come together for you. Repeat the lube process on the other hinges or hinge. Even the bottom hinge. Pop the pin, lube it, lube the hinge, put it back. Clean up after each one. When they're all done, toss the pouch. But before we clean up and put our tools away, Let's check the effect on the door. It should sound something like this. Now that's a job well done. All you gotta do now is clean up your mess, put away your tools, and pretty soon you'll forget all about the fact that you ever had a squawking door. But if that squawk ever does come back, you'll know how to fix it. And if you'd like to avail yourself of all the door tricks I have up my sleeve, then check out my little ebook at www.doortricks.com.